It's amazing what the fans can do. These days, it's not uncommon to see high production value in fan-made sequels or spin-offs, especially when it comes to RPG Maker games. Games like Dot Flow and Lisa the Pointless demonstrate just exactly how passionate and talented fans can be. But there is a fine line between creating a work that pays tribute to and respects the source material of a well-established game and straight up ripping something off. These days, it's not unheard of to see rip-offs of any game's popping up around the place, a notable example being that Hotline Miami knockoff that somehow wormed its way into Steam. But this isn't something for sale, it's a small fan-made project that claims to draw inspiration from Pokemon, Final Fantasy, and Lisa. After playing it, I have to say I don't really see the similarities between it and Final Fantasy or Pokemon, but the similarities between it and Lisa... It's a little bit too similar. The game in question is called Escape from Detroit. It's been available on GameJolt.com since January of this year, releasing even after the brilliant fan game Lisa the Pointless RPG. But the thing about Escape from Detroit is it's not claiming to be a fan game, but rather an original game that's simply inspired by Lisa. Now, there's a difference in being inspired and then copying something. I mean, for example, Lisa was inspired by Earthbound, and those are two totally different games. So, when you don't state that it's a fan game, the intention comes off that it's supposedly original, and if that's the case, you're likely gonna get some sort of backlash about how you're ripping something off. I've gotten requests for this one from many people, all of which share the unanimous opinion that it's a blatant Lisa ripoff. Now, I'm not the one to trash the work of a single dude. I mean, it's a lot different when it's a commercial product made for a profit, but when it's a single guy making a game for free purely out of expressing himself, there's boundaries there that I'm a little more hesitant to cross because I don't want to come off as mean or insensitive, you know? But hey, it's something Lisa related, so it's something I've got to cover. So let's freaking head on over to GameJolt.com and get this thing downloaded. Oh my lord, even Lisa the Pointless didn't have this many warnings. I mean, cartoon violence, mild fantasy violence, realist. How do you have cartoon fantasy and realistic violence? Realistic bloodshed, sexual violence, alcohol use, drug use, tobacco use, nudity, sexual themes, strong language, Language, mature humor and simulated gambling buddy this game's got it all sign me up make you download an exe file simply called it d.exe uh this can only go well okay so i get the game extracted and i'm gonna boot it up and <laughs> Get happiness, get me- oh, Christ. Okay, so the game begins with a flashback sequence to the main character's youth, you know, like Lisa did. Lisa the Pointless did too. Um, Matt, you know I hate you. I don't care. Move. You're not gonna talk to me like that. Go to hell. All right, got some great A writing here. So we've got our first fight and, uh, oh, ew, ew. ah, that's, uh, that's, um, not gonna lie, that's a pretty ugly battle screen. I mean, most of these games have a really abstract, uh, Earthbound style background, but this is just the sprites upscaled and looking really blurry and not good. Anyway, the battle system's a carbon copy of Lisa's. Menus are the same, you've got the WASD combos, it's identical. So, after beating the shit out of this guy, his final words are, Fuck you, you have no family or friends for a reason. <laughs> What is this music that plays when you level up? It's not its not fitting at all, but it's kind of... Dude, this is a freaking jam! Right after beating up the blonde kid, we meet with some greasy old man like five meters to the right and he tells us that it's a messed up world and he wants to give us a mean of defending ourselves. We then have a choice to either refuse or get a knife or get a gun. This this random ass old guy just gives a gun to a child. He sees this baby ass 11 year old fighting in the streets. He's like, hmm, this kid's fighting pretty good. I got an idea. I know, I know how I can help him out. Here's a fucking gun. This kid will go far. 
Though the context is absolutely freaking bonkers, the idea game mechanic-wise isn't half bad, honestly. Not having a weapon gives you the classic punch combos, that's the hard mode. The knife is similar, but you'll do a lot more damage, that's the medium mode. And the gun? It's a, it's a gun, dude, that's easy mode. We wake up years later, in our 30s probably, we've got a son now, we see some guy being this one. What are you doing to my son? Okay, so we get this guy to bugger off and um dad Jimmy his, his name's Jimmy. Okay, this rock has just saved your life. Oh, they're even stealing that joke, too uh, But like it doesn't work here. That's a random cliff that no one needs to go near You don't have to actually climb down there. You're supposed to go back to your house it, It's also not an object of interest. It's just a rock This joke was in Lisa to communicate how dangerous cliffs were and it did it in a comedic way using a balloon I mean obviously you're gonna interact with the balloon, but Man, you can tell this guy just really misses the point with this kind of thing. So once we're home, we get drunk and tell Jimmy to be a good boy, and then we pass out, and then have a flashback to, like, how our wife died. I don't know, this guy tries to write a sappy, heartfelt moment, but, like, come on, dude. There's more to that than just slapping the words, I love you, in the text boxes every three seconds. So Jimmy runs away from home, and the news tells us that we're now a wanted criminal? Why? Freaking, I don't know, but that's the excuse to why everyone wants us dead now, because there's a bounty on us, and yeah. This plot is already the same as Lisa's. I mean, just replace your adoptive daughter with your son, and uh, uh, da ding you got the same plot! Key scenes are even copied exactly, like this one here. You get a choice between your first party member or all of your items, uh, not even trying to be original. And look at the villain, it's just rando, but like... Bad. Oh, everything about this game feels so bland. I mean, remember how Lisa had all these crazy party members? In this game, they're just kind of dudes. They're not memorable in any sort of way. I mean, we've got Alex. He's a guy. He tears his shirt off every time he uses a special move. Where the hell is he getting all these shirts from? And then there's James, this dweeb ass in a black hoodie. What? What? He, he dabs to attack. Uh... I'm starting to think this guy's trying to make the worst game ever made. Like the great Derek Acosta of Mega64 fame once said, the dab is like a magic spell. You do it, and everyone in the room's pissed off. No one quite knows why they're pissed off, but despite that, everyone finds himself filled with this uncontrollable rage. That's what this guy's doing. He's using this magic spell to piss off his audience. Another one of his special moves is trash talk. Let's see what that does. Do you even whiff? Everything feels so effortlessly slapped together. The sprites aren't very good. The game is full of typos and grammar errors, not to mention so many glitches. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's early access. The game's bound to have glitches, and I'm not going to pretend that other games didn't have the same problem. I mean, I found a couple of glitches in Least of the Pointless, and that game's kick-ass, but it's a lot more abundant here. One of them was game-breaking. I couldn't progress because of it. During the Russian roulette scene, and yes, they even stole a Russian roulette minigame, but every time someone dies, the game crashes. Unable to find file, graphics slash animation slash blood? Oh god, if this guy couldn't fix his own game, we'll do it for him. Okay, um, um, yeah, okay, they, they, it kind of looks like blood, they'll save this as, uh, blood.png. Okay, I made the folders, put that in there, let's try this again. It worked! It worked! <laughs> On one hand, that's amazing, but on the other hand, now I have to keep playing this. Shit. And what is up with this battle music? Is this supposed to be Lisa or is this Metal Gear fucking Rising? what this dude's obsession with weed is either. I mean, you want a party member? You give him some weed. You need a healing item? You smoke a joint. You recovery moves? You, you pass the spliff. And like, I, I guess I get he's trying to emulate how the characters do drugs like they did in Lisa, you know, with joy and whatnot, but I feel like he's completely missing the point here. I, I feel a softer drug like weed doesn't translate that idea, not at all? Maybe if these guys were hopped up on heroin and morphine? Sure, maybe, I guess, but like, it doesn't even make any sort of attempt to be like a thing they're dealing with, like in Lisa. Instead it's like, yeah, 
weeds a healing item. It's just so juvenile. Oh, we've got that motorcycle part. That's exactly the same as the motorcycle part in Lisa, except when you're holding the button to go off ramps, you don't do a wheelie, so it's harder to get a feel for, and... I also find the game really hard to navigate, too. A lot of areas have walls that look like they lead to another area, but it's just a wall. There isn't enough here to convey what screens lead to other screens and what screens don't. This whole game is just a shittier, clunkier, grosser, less polished, less appealing, less interesting, less fun, less everything version of Lisa. It's riddled with bad spelling, bad writing, tasteless humor, poor game design, and just an overall code of bullshit. You know, I said at the beginning of this video that I didn't want to just rip into the game because it was a big project made by a single dude for free out of passion. But I mean, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, dude. It's just so bad. But you know what they say. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. I mean, what's the point of criticism if none of it's constructive? I think it's important to find something you love in every game you hate. I mean, otherwise, no one's gonna know what they're doing right. The game does admittedly have some decent ideas. The difficulty settings with a knife and gun, those are pretty cool. There's this whole system where talking to certain NPCs and responding in certain ways can increase or decrease your stats. That's neat. Some of the music's not bad. The victory screen music, while unfitting as hell, is pretty pretty jamming. There's also this night to day cycle we try to program in. Sometimes after staying at a bonfire it'll be darker out when you wake up. I mean it just looks like a filter over the screen that makes everything harder to see and it bugs up the game when entering buildings sometimes but it's a novel idea, and even though it didn't work out super well, it's still a minor detail he put in the effort to try and implement. It's the only game he's got up on his Game Jolt page right now, so it's presumably the first game he's made and published for others to play. I'd say take it as a learning experience. I mean, you know how some people make YouTube poops so they can learn how to edit. I guess sometimes you gotta make a Lisa ripoff so you can learn how to make a game, even if your first one's not a very good one. You know, practice makes perfect. There's no telling this guy might someday put out something decent. And when that day comes, we're all gonna feel pretty dang bad for making fun of him for making this one.